Oh, okay. This camera angle is really annoying me. Okay, I think that's a better angle. Hey guys, it's Lossie. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be filming a sixth form advice video. I'm in my first year of sixth form, so I'm in year 12. Yeah, and I'm just going to tell you some stuff that I wished I'd known before I joined sick form, you know? So anyways, I thought I'd share them with you because it might help some of you guys. But um, yeah, without any further ado, let's get on to the video. Also, I'm really paranoid about my hair in this video because basically I just got it dyed. That's why it's like so blonde. Um, but I'm trying to like grow out my fringe, but it's like... So my first bit of advice would be to choose subjects that you enjoy. Honestly, it's gonna make your sick form experience so much more fun, enjoyable, if you just choose subjects that you enjoy. Because at this time last year, I'm pretty sure, what was I gonna do? I was gonna do like, um, biology, chemistry, maths and drama, I think, and then like drop chemistry or something. I don't really know, I can't really remember. I was gonna choose those subjects because I thought that science and maths -y subjects would look most impressive on a, um, like a university application and that's literally the only reason why I wanted to do those subjects. I thought uh, people thought they were really difficult and stuff like that but now now thinking back I could not do any science or maths -y A levels they just do not suit me at all. I'm much more of a creative humanities kind of gal because in the long run your A levels are going to determine what job sector you go into so these subjects are literally gonna stick with you for the rest of your life no pressure <laughs> just make sure it's just a subject that you enjoy and don't think about what other people are gonna think too much it's your future not theirs okay my second bit of advice so I'm just looking over at my notepad of notes but my second bit of advice is to make notes as you go through the A level course I did this at GCSE as well and it was an absolute lifesaver oh my god just do it, honestly. Um, at my school, I don't know if they do this at other schools, but we have these things called progress tests and we have them like once a term or something, I don't really know. Um, but they kind of force you to make notes as you go along. And honestly, that is so helpful. So even if you don't have those like progress tests or like mocks or anything that, like that to motivate you, just try and set yourself like periodic targets because girl, that's gonna help. Because with A-levels, you cannot afford to do like last minute notes like you can for GCSE. For A-level, you need to know all that background knowledge. A-levels are more about like skill and applied knowledge, whereas GCSE is more like regurgitating information. So just make notes, make sure you know them inside and out, and then you can apply them to certain questions and then twist it to suit the question. So my third tip would be to actually work in your freeze, crazy. I know, um, no, but in all seriousness, this is actually something that I struggle with just because my friends usually have the same freeze as I do. So I'm really tempted to just go and hang out with them instead of going to the library and actually doing some work. I find that one of the big changes from GCSE to A-level is the amount of freedom you get. Like I get, how many freezes do I get a week now? I get quite a lot of freeze. Like I have a whole Friday off and then I have about, two hours of freeze per day. Um, that compared to having no freeze at GCSE is completely liberating. So especially at the beginning of the year, I took full advantage of this and just went and hung out with my friends instead of working. And I actually found that this was a real issue because I was like, okay, I need to actually work if I wanna get good grades at A level. So I found that something that really motivates me is actually having an online tutor. It almost like forces me to become motivated because it gives me an extra lesson like slotted into my timetable basically. So the online tutor that I use, and it's actually really exciting because they are partnering with me on this video, which is actually crazy, um, is theprofs.co.uk and they're just sick. So basically what the profs do is they'll assign you a tutor in any subject field you want at any level. So it can be GCSE, A level, degree, dissertation, PhD, literally anything. Um, and they'll help you with anything that you want. So for example, my um, tutor Britain, she helps me with my English literature and also my EPQ. I haven't started my EPQ yet, but she said that she will help me on that as well. Not to mention Britain, my tutor, literally went to Harvard. 
She's literally gonna help me to enhance my learning to the fullest potential. Also, I find that especially with subjects like English, it's really helpful to get literally an expert's opinion because the whole A-level is literally opinion-based. Yeah, honestly, their website is literally so, so good. And they also have a blog as well, which is really good. So you can literally just like, go read their page and I'm pretty sure they have some advice on there. So luckily enough for you guys, I actually have a discount code and I'm so excited to say this because I feel like James Charles, but I'll leave um, my discount code here for 10% off. Um, honestly, it's a game changer. Just give it a go. They're so friendly. They're so lovely, so motivating, really helps to enhance your grades and it's literally just a win-win situation. So go do it. <laughs> so my final bit of advice, is to think about what other things you're also gonna do as well as your actual A-levels to help enhance your learning. So this could literally be anything. This could be EPQ, this could be work experience, this could be volunteer work, this could be um, like applying for like school council, head girl, boy, just like titles like that within the school, as well as things like extracurricular activities. So like sporting things or drama things or music things or art things or anything like that. You've got to be able to manage your A-levels as well as juggle all of these extra things as well. So I'd say as much as you want to apply for all of these things to impress universities and whatnot, you need to be realistic about it. Do not try and juggle everything at once because that is something that I tend to be guilty of. I try to just say yes to everything. I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure, whatever. And I definitely did that at GCSE. And looking back now, I was under so much stress for GCSE. Like, I actually don't know how I coped. Um, so that's kind of something that I wanted to fix for sick form. Okay, so editing this back, I've just realized how badly I explained that. So I'm gonna just try and clarify what I was trying to say a bit on here. Okay, so basically what I was trying to say is that the main thing that universities look at is your actual A-level grades. They do care about extra and co-curricular stuff, but not nearly as much as they do your A-level grades. So I think that the most important thing is to make sure that you get the grades that you need for your course. And then in order to like make you stand out from the crowd, then add some extra and co-curricular activities that will make you stand out that extra bit but don't put yourself forward for them if you don't think that you can juggle everything all at once does that make sense i think that kind of clarified it i hope okay so i kind of did say that was my final point but ignore that this is my final point um so one thing that i wish i would have known is just to chill a bit for the first term you kind of deserve it after GCSEs, I'm not gonna lie. Um, the first time at A-levels anyways is kind of like you being introduced to your new A-level courses. Um, it's more slow and calm, less hectic than GCSEs. So I think just kind of take advantage of that. Also, I wish that I knew in the first term, I was expecting to kind of like go into A-levels and considering that I did like all right in my GCSEs, I was considering to find like A levels like all right because I was used to getting like only A's and A stars at GCSE. Not trying to like not trying to boast or anything, but I'm literally just being real with you guys. Um, so I kind of found it a shock that I was getting like C's and B's at A level for the first bit, and I it kind of like dampened my confidence a little bit. Um, but that is literally so normal. You haven't got an exam for another year and a half, so you've got that time to improve those grades. So I wish I just kind of knew that, not to put too much pressure on myself at the beginning of at the beginning of year twelve and just kind of take it take it easy. You deserve a break. Just literally just have fun for the first term. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to my channel. I love you all millions and trillions and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.